Hi, um, my name is Mara Linsky Deegan, and I'm the associate curator and registrar here at the Charles H. McNider Art Museum in Mason City, Iowa. And today we're going to be talking about the artist Neil Welliver. Uh, Neil Welliver was born in 1929, and um, he went to the Philadelphia Museum College of Art um, to kind of get his training in art. And then one of the cool things is that he got his uh, Masters of Fine Art at Yale University, which is pretty neat. So in 1953 um, to 1956, he taught at the Cooper Union School, and then um, from 1956 until 1966, he actually taught at Yale, where he went um, and got his master's degree. Um, and he taught art the whole time, and really just thought that art would be his career. And um, then he actually was uh, the overseer of the um, University of Pennsylvania's um, graduate program in art until uh, 1989 when he retired. Earlier in his artistic career, um, Neil Welliver was associated and really, I think, more influenced by the abstract expressionist painters. Now, abstract expressionists were a group of painters and other artists, but oh, mostly painters, um, that really wanted an American style. They didn't want to copy what had been done in Europe, which was a lot of what um, uh, American artists had been doing before this time. And this was right after World War II, um, kind of in the late 1940s, but really big in the 1950s. And what these artists really would focus on is the um, act of making the art. Um, the actual finished product of an artwork was important, but the, the act of painting and m using your arm to make those, uh, make the paint go onto the canvas was what they really focused on. And Neil Welliver was very interested in that, and you can see that in his paintings, even the ones that weren't abstract expressionist paintings, you can see um, that your eye kind of goes to the brush marks and you can see where the artist actually um, put the brush down to create the work. And that's something that would influence him. But as a younger artist, when he was first starting out, he was associated with a group of um, artists called color field artists. And what those artists would do is really focus on color. Um, color field artists thought, you know, color is something that everybody can experience and you don't need to make it uh, a piece of artwork, maybe look like a photograph to make it still meaningful and emotional and powerful for people. You can just use the color itself to do that. So most color field artists would do very flat, usually pretty large um, uh, pieces that had just very saturated, which means really, really um, intense color. Um, and it didn't matter what color, it was all kinds of different colors, but they'd usually be big sections of color. So it wouldn't be like what the abstract expressionists were doing sometimes, uh, you know, splatter painting and things like that. These would be sometimes bands of color. Sometimes one canvas would be all just one color but different shades and variations. And they would be very layered sometimes, and sometimes they would look very smooth. Um, but the big thing, it was to focus on the color. So when you look at this piece, you can really see where your eye focuses on the color, especially the color of this yellow canoe, because it's so bright, it really draws you in. And I think that's what the color field artists um, like to do. Now there are some famous color field artists. If you think that's something that you might want to learn a little bit more about, as long as you get permission to go online, you can research some artists that are color field artists. And um, one of the big ones is a guy named Mark Rothko. He made really big canvases that were um, really focusing on color. Also two artists that we have in our collection that um, are associated with the color field artists are Helen Frankenthaler and Adolf Gottlieb. So if you want to learn a little bit more about them, those are two people to look up. You can actually, too, when you come to the museum, see some of their work right here. So Neil Welliver really did focus on, or was influenced by abstract expressionists, was kind of a color field artist for a while. Um, but then as he kind of grew as an artist, he decided, you know what, I really like the nature. I love landscapes. I really want to show 
nature and landscapes, so that's what he started focusing on. So a lot of his pieces from midway through his career, especially toward the end of his career, really focused on landscapes uh, around where he lived. And most of his adult life, um, he would live uh, in Maine, especially later in his life. And he really loved to go hiking and walking around and looking at the landscape and painting it. And what he would do is he would sketch and sometimes paint what we call in plain air. And when we talk about in plain air, that means the artist goes out and either sits or um, stands right in the place that they want to paint and does it right there. So that would mean if you were really excited to paint uh, the Winnebago River, you would go down to the Winnebago River and maybe sit on the bank or even wade in it and sketch or draw right there um, so that you could really get a sense of what it looked like and felt like while you're in the space. So he would do that, he would go out in nature, he would make his sketches and sometimes paintings. Now think about everything you need for a sketch. Sometimes that's not too much stuff. That might be a notepad with some paper and a pencil or a piece of um, drawing chalk um, or charcoal, and there you go. But if you were gonna paint in plain air, you might need a little bit more stuff. You might need um, something to hold your canvas or your piece of paper on, maybe an easel. You might need a chair to sit because it might take a little bit and standing for a long time, especially when you're doing something, sometimes can be hard. You would also need your paints and a place to put your paints and water. So there's a lot to it. So if you're thinking about doing this, uh, you really got a plan. And that's what Neil Welver would do. He would go out one whole day and he would paint from the morning till the evening. But he couldn't paint one thing the whole day. And that's because if you've gone outside and you've sat in one place or been in one place for a while, you notice that the sun and the light changes every couple hours and it makes it a one place look a little bit different than the way it looked before. So he would go out and he would paint in about three hour segments. So he'd paint for about three hours and then the light would change. So then he might move someplace else or paint a new um, picture or make a new drawing when the light had changed. So it would look a little bit different. And so he would sometimes spend nine hours outside and do three um, or four different little sketches using different light. So Neil Welver was very dedicated to being in nature when he was sketching, drawing, and painting. Um, and he was so dedicated that, remember I said that sometimes he lived in Pennsylvania and sometimes he lived in Maine. And both of those places, just like here in Iowa, get pretty cold in the wintertime. But he didn't care. He would go out in the wintertime. And sometimes he would even say that he preferred to um, sketch and it's a little bit harder to paint in the winter time because you want to make sure your paints don't freeze. But it would, he'd love to sketch and get the feeling of what it was like out in nature in the winter time because the air was so crisp. Because um, all that cold air kind of uh, froze everything up and made it just really crisp and made the light awesome. So he really enjoyed that. Now, sometimes he would make sketches in plain air out in the wilderness and then he'd bring those sketches back to his studio um, and actually make a full-size painting from that sketch. And a lot of artists will do that. Sometimes artists will take photographs, and sometimes artists will do sketches, and sometimes they'll do both. And then they'll come back to their studio where they have a little bit more time and don't have to sit outside um, and keep moving things around and taking things in. Because let's say you wanted to work on a painting for three days. Well, you're not gonna sit outside in, well, you might, but most people aren't gonna sit outside in nature for three days um, and paint or take everything down each night. It would be a lot of work, extra work, that maybe artists don't wanna worry, worry about. So um, he would set up in his studio and that way he could take a little bit of time and really get things looking the way he wants to look. So one last little neat thing that I think is kind of interesting, and I wonder if it'd be interesting to talk to other artists and see if they also do something like this. Neil Welver almost always would start his paintings in the upper left corner, and he would paint down kind of diagonally until he got to the bottom right corner. Now he would almost always do that, which I think is kind of interesting. 
So he wouldn't think, oh, I'm going to start with a canoe, or I'm going to start over here, or maybe I'm going to do, you know, some of the shadowing and stuff first. Nope, he'd always start it there and move down. And that's just the way his brain liked to process it and liked to create his works. So I think that's always kind of fun. Like I said, if you get a chance to talk to a professional artist, that might be something to ask them if there's always one way they start and one way they finish, or if they just do it how they feel. So while Neil Welver did enjoy painting outside, really got a lot from nature, um, he didn't always have the happiest life, unfortunately. And some artists don't have the happiest life, and some do. It just depends. But he had um, some tragedies in his life. He had several of his children sadly passed away, and his second wife also passed away, so that was really hard for him. Um, also, in 1975, his house, his studio, and all the paintings that were in the studio at the time burned down in a fire. And that was really hard on him because he lost some things that he was really working on, and he lost his home, and so that was a, a big tragedy. But he also did have some um, kind of cool things. Again, he was a, a great painter, he uh, was a teacher, and one of the interesting things that I learned about him that I didn't know is that one of his sons is actually an actor that has been on TV shows and in movies. And he's been in a movie like um, Transformers, one of the Transformers movies, which is pretty cool. And his name is Titus Welber. So if you ever see Titus Welber in a movie or a TV show, that's Neil Wilber's son.